Okay, here we go. <laughs> 10 or 11 days of this. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for coming. We are so delighted that you're here because we have this deep conviction that awakening can be fun <laughs> and actually humorous because that's actually what it's about anyway, you know, and the faster we get that, the better. So, uh, what a beautiful setting. It, they told me, I just got here today, I haven't been here for quite a while, and they said it rained for two months, and here comes the sun, right when we're starting the event. And I think we're going to have a lot of sunshine here. And hopefully a lot of sunshine in your hearts. Yeah. Really feeling the love that you are, and have always been. And this year, Nikita is running the show here. Yeah. <laughs> Some of you saw the movie Lucy. Yeah. You know, where she goes at 50%, 60%. When she gets up there and she can pretty much move the people around, move the cars around. So, Nikita just brought all of you here. <laughs> she just walked your bodies, flew your bodies, and uh, that's good. You did a good job. I, this is a lot of happy people that you pulled together here. Yeah, yeah, that's um, actually it's true. That's exactly how it happened. <laughs> I, I came here, I'm like, I don't even know when, like what, a few months ago? We came back from the tour. And then as soon as I got to as soon as I got to Camus, I was just like something I felt something was calling me so deeply and I didn't even know why. It was just like I didn't even know what it was and it was just like such deep call. And then I started praying about it and I heard and I really felt it unexpressed love. There's something and up until then, I mean, we were on tour. I was on tour with David, and you'd think that's like, you know, I was in the extension mode, and you'd think that it's, it's enough, and like, this is, this is already good, and yet there's something calling me, there's something more. There's something more, and I was like, oh, I don't even know how to answer it, but I really started to feel it, and I couldn't, like, I couldn't deny it. And so I just really felt like, oh, there's much more love to be expressed. And then I just prayed and I said, okay, help me, Spirit, like really help me. And the next day, David tells me, you're running the strawberry this year. And right, right there and then I knew that this is it. This is the answer. This is the answer to that call for love. To like, this is going to be the way to really, to... To bring out that little bit, <laughs> the rest, but that little bit that was still calling, and uh, and and it, yeah, yeah, and I didn't even know how much there was, and I mean like, I didn't like I didn't be, it's like I knew but I didn't, and so and then I just from there on I just kept I I was just all I did was I just kept asking for help. It was like help me, help me. And I could feel it in my mind that I put out a, like a call to the whole universe and beyond. And I just said, I need you. I just at, in every like every night I would pray and I would just really feel like connected to all of you. I felt like I knew all of you. Like I felt like I was like, come, come, come here. Like I really I could feel that everyone could hear me. And I just like I would put out this call. And uh, and yeah, and everyone every day I'd be like, I, I'll hear I'm coming, and then I'll hear, oh someone signed up, or like someone's calling in, and it was like on and on and on, and then there's more, and there's constant like, help me spirit, help me, help me, help me, and it felt like it was just like a whole new to ha whole new way to heaven started to build from there. It was just it was very deep. And so it's just all for that, like to really learn to collaborate in the heart. It was all for collaboration in the heart, just really to 
just like really everything happened due to this desire, which is not personal. I knew that call to extend love, that wasn't just Nikita's call, that was the call of the heart. That like whoever's gonna show up here, they have the same call, wanting to extend, wanting to just like express the deep love that's there. And from there on, that's been our practice. That's all we ever did, like just really, just learning to really share the heart fully in every moment, not hold back. And boy, it took practice, all right? Like, it really did. I never knew how vigilant, like, just how much focus you have to be just to be able to say I love you. The other day, I, I, I was guided to tell um, a friend of mine that I really, that I love him, and then I did it, and then I kept hearing, like, do it again, and I'm like, well, uh, and then and then my two other friends came, like Suzanne and Jenny, and they're like, you weren't clear enough. <laughs> and I'm like, how clear can you be, <laughs> right? And then I'm like, help. I'm like, okay, help me. We can, like, can you help me? And they're like, okay. So they called him and so said, did you hear what Nikita said? And I'm like, why? I can't. I'm like, what humbleness? I can't even say I love you without help. <laughs> It's like, because it's deeper than that. There's still so much, so much fear of just that simple, I love you, like I love you so much. And that's been the practice. And it's like, help me, help me, help me, help me. And how the help appears so quickly. And it's like, will you help me to extend the love? And it's like, yes, yes, yes. So I kind of, so technically I called you all to be able to help me to extend the love. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Yeah, it's no small thing to live as if there's no tomorrow. Live as if, as if there's no tomorrow. Dance as if no one's watching. You know, just be into that, what do we call it, involuntary miracle. And to experience the involuntary nature of the miracle. That's kind of been like a theme this year. That's in A Course in Miracles, that miracles are involuntary. They should not be under conscious control. Wow. You've got to get to be more like Bill Murray. Uh, you, you got to be a little more like Robin Williams. Where are you right now in, on the Robin Williams scale? Uh, you know, I mean, he seemed to pass recently and you could hear the people just pouring out the love. Just pouring out the love. I heard one person say, um, when you were there when he was in front of you, it was as if you were the most important person in the world. There was such full attention, such full attention that you felt. Whether he said anything or not, it was just the, the presence, the gaze. Walk into a room and light up the room. Even, even before he would start acting out. <laughs> he would just walk into the room and the room would kind of move toward him. Because again, it's mind. Remember, that's what we're really learning. It's all mind. It's all consciousness. Everything is a reflection of your mind, your consciousness. So, you know, that's I guess that's what you could practice. That's what the kid is talking about about a love that that isn't doesn't have a hesitation to it. Love that doesn't have a limit. It doesn't have a selection. It's it's not personal. It's not selecting a person out of seven billion persons and thinking that you can focalize or you can zero it down to a person. Because really, we've been told this for many, many centuries, love has no object. That's what agape love is. That's what universal love is. That's what unconditional love is. As soon as you objectify it, it's not love. It can't be love if it's objectified. Just like the flower sends off the fragrance for everything and everyone. It doesn't select where the wind is to blow the fragrance. It doesn't aim the fragrance. It offers the fragrance. So really that's what we're here for. And I'm feeling <laughs> the Beatles. <laughs> Let me take you down cause I'm going to 
strawberry fields. Nothing is real, and there's nothing to get up about. Strawberry fields forever. You can feel it in the vibration. It's happy. And it's even got nothing is real in, in the <laughs> lyrics. My gosh, we've been serenaded. The universe has been serenading us. It's been coming at us from all different angles. And over and over and over. Did you get it yet? Did you get it yet? Did you get it? You know, it's, it's just there, eager to be known. Love, God, oneness. That's no mystery. That Actually, that's the only thing that can be known. Everything else can be forgotten. You can have your spiritual Alzheimer and dementia all the way to the max so that you forget. In the end, you forget every detail of this world. Your heart is so filled that it just fades. It just fades away. So I think, you know, like Nikita was saying, it takes practice, practice, practice. It, it practice is a word, but it's, it's more like a focus. That's really what it is. Because we're, because beingness or being present is not a doing. We've had a lot of practice with doing. And sometimes we even use the word undoing, unraveling. You know, we start to welcome that. We start to laugh as the unraveling comes along. You start to feel like you're like the scarecrow in the Wizard of Oz. They've, the flying monkeys have taken all the straw. <laughs> and you just laugh. You've got clothes hanging around and your arms over there, your legs over there, <laughs> your torsos down the road somewhere. And you actually can laugh, you know, instead of obsessing about how your body looks or how it feels and all the things, you know, da da da. You can actually have a good laugh. And I feel like, you know, when we come together like this with such a clear, strong purpose, that we cannot fail to have that experience. It's, it's really the desire of our heart. And so we really don't look forward to a future. You know, we, we want to give up the bad habit of futurizing and maybe following your intuition, following your guidance, letting the guidance be practical for you. You know, not trying to push anything away or cover anything over or hide anything, but just being fully transparent, so transparent to the point that finally it just feels like it's just you. It's just all you. You in awareness, not you personality you. To see that it's safe to drop the mask, that there's never been a reason to hold on to a mask. It never really protected us, it just blocked the love. And we don't need that mask anymore. And we've got Tell them what we've got, my gosh. <laughs> what have we got in store here? Music. We have music. We have <laughs> sessions. We have experiential sessions. We have altar sessions. That's new. Tell us about an altar session. Altar session. This is, uh, this is, this is brand new, actually. We've, uh, we've been almost, I don't know. Testing it on us. <laughs> That's we, tested it out. we tested it out. <laughs> this is a brand new thing. This is where you. It's actually that Jesus refers to you as um, a holy relationship is given to you, and so um, and I feel like oh this is, like this is it where you join with a brother in the miracle and it's just in the prayer and it's so felt. It is so felt that everything that doesn't belong naturally just really, you know, shows up and washes away. And it could even, and uh, there isn't even a response to it. It's like there's no need to address anything. There's no need to, like, have long discussions. It's just like that, re the reality of the prayer, like, what, like, nothing real can be threatened, nothing unreal exists, is so apparent that you just rejoice in it and everything is gone just in that moment and so these are the altar sessions now and this is where you know we say like the uh, the use for words is almost over this is just it's like 
there's no words to it. It's just real. This is what's real. And it's like in, in, in that joining, in that prayer, in that miracle, it is so obvious that whatever's coming up, it could be even like, oh, but it's so dark. It's seemingly so dark. It has no power. It's like nothing can stand in the way because the only thing that's real is just that, you know, joining in that quantum connection and that quantum prayer, and it's felt. And so these are... This is our new, like, this is the brand new gift that we're offering <laughs> this year at the Strawberry Fields Forever, and it's, uh, it works right away. It just, it's, it produces immediate results. So um, these are the altar sessions, and uh, whoever, uh, the guiding lights or the leaders of the altar sessions, they'll be able to maybe give some more details around it. But it's just a really joining in this really, really, really strong prayer. <laughs> And just investing everything, you know, like everything into it is just like only this is real. And daring to just give into it and daring to just believe that this is the only thing that's real. And then watch, watch, it's watch a whole new world appear in front of you. So, yeah. So these are the altar sessions and like I said, music sessions. Sessions. <laughs> uh, experiential then there's a lot it's a very it's a spontaneous uh, strawberry fields festival this year so we don't even know what's coming i was telling everyone like i'm expecting aliens to come <laughs> and so because i'm like i don't know like i don't know what to expect it's so it's so out of this world so we're just just expecting unexpected so it's like everything like just expect miracles all the way and dare dare to expect them dare to not look anywhere else dare not to doubt it so yeah yeah why don't we all just do that this year? <laughs> now that's great because in the past you know some of you know we've had expression sessions some of you have been here with in the morning. How helpful were those? Especially if you've come from a conditioning of denial and repression and, you know, like children are to be seen and not heard and button it up and zip it. If you've grown up with all those kind of conditionings, then it's actually helpful to speak up. You know, sometimes when you can't hand it over, you try and try, it's helpful to speak it up. And of course, we're all familiar with so many different techniques in psychology and psychotherapy and sp all kinds of spiritual practices. Many of us have gone to churches and synagogues and temples. We've been through rituals and so on and so forth. When I first heard you mention the altar session, um, yeah, when I was listening to it, because I'm just showing up new, I, I've never been to an altar session. I have to walk around in the morning. But uh, when I first heard of the altar session, I, you know, I got a flash because you know, back in my 20s, I just was just open-minded, just going, I go to Hare Krishna temple and go into a synagogue and a church and, and all kinds of places, ashrams and this and this and this, just, just showing up and open, open-minded, paying attention. And when this altar session actually reminds me of the first time when I went to a Quaker service. How many of you have ever been to a Quaker service? Oh, yeah. That was precious. I remember the first time I just walked in and I felt this reverence and I felt this devotion and it was still. And there was no, you know, doxology and benediction and um, sermon and all the things I was accustomed to growing up in a Christian church, I just walked in there and it was walking into presence, walking into stillness. And then I stayed for the whole service and it was just an amazing experience because that's kind of what it was like. It was almost like what I had been told one time, like if you, if you don't have something really to offer and really to extend that's better than the silence, it's best to be in the silence. And that's what I felt when I went into this uh, Quaker church. Reverence. And then I went there and I was just there. And then someone would just, after silence and silence and silence, I, I'd hear this beautiful voice. It, it wasn't a minister or a leader or anything. It was just, it was, we were all in there together. We were all equal. 
we were all basking in the same pool of silence, and then the, the voices would come out, uh, beautiful, testifying, sharing, extending, and then back into the silence. It actually felt like it was, it was an enriching experience, like everyone there appreciated the stillness, appreciated that presence of non-judgment, and when there was something to offer, it would kind of be brought forth. That's what these altar, altar sessions sound like, you know. It could be anything. Because maybe you show up there and you walk in and you come to one of these sessions and you're not feeling peaceful. And maybe you're not feeling still. Something's stirred up. Wow, it's okay to offer that over to the altar. It's okay to offer that to the presence, to the stillness. To free your mind. Literally, you're saying, I know you are... Almighty, I know you are powerful, I know you are are there for me, and I want to offer this up. And in that sense, it's it's not like a typical thing. The words were not used in a way I was I was familiar with. I didn't have a past reference. It was a beautiful experience. So that's great. I, I from what I understand that's gonna be in the morning from like around nine to ten or something like that. Nine to nine nine forty. Nine to nine forty. Yeah. So that'll yeah. be like a daily opportunity to wake up and open to the presence and then come in that presence. And if there's something that you want to offer up, could be a miracle, could be a testimony, could be something that's heavy on your heart. You just want to offer that up. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> Let me be, I want to have a joyful day. Yeah, like asking, daring, like to ask for help. Just, it's just ask for help of the spirit and like just like really claiming that I'm worthy. Like this is, you know, spirit is going to take it from me. Spirit, like really, spirit really wants me to be happy. Spirit like wants me to have a full experience of joy. And it's like this is, like there's no need to handle anything, not even a little thought on your own. It's just offer it all for spirit and watch how quickly it disappears. Like, watch it, watch it. And it's just a constant, yeah, at, like, accepting the love, accepting the help. And sometimes, like, you might even walk into a session like that, or you join with a brother, right? Because it all started with, you know, first it was Suzanne and I, and then Jenny, Suzanne, and I, and it was just, like, constant, we, Spirit would tell us to come and join, and we, we were just like, we're just willing to show up, right? And then something, like, something really would start coming from the heart, right? And it's like, oh, sometimes, like, we may not even know what's on our heart, but because there's such, like, an allowance and such love, the love is so felt, that naturally, it's like, there's no desire to, desire to hide anything, like, whether it's, like, whether it's deep love and an expression of love or anything that's in the way of that, right? It's just like really release it, release it fully and so that you can be in the joy and you can flow and you and extend. And it's like, and none of it is random. Like, whoever is going to be in your groups, these are the very ones that are going to take you home, really, that are going to bring you home. And it's like, so there's that gratitude for the brothers. It's like that spirit has it all perfectly orchestrated. And it's all or orchestrated in a way for us to open up our heart to this deep, deep love beyond, beyond this world, beyond personal. And so this is a very, I would really take advantage of these altar sessions. I, I have, actually, so I would highly recommend. So. I take, yes. And speaking of the altar sessions and speaking of presence, um, yeah. That was behind the, the, what was in my heart, when um, I really, really, really felt to invite Lisa Cairns this year to come and speak here. There she is over there. So you're in for a big, 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 big treat. Innocence, lightness, playfulness, and uncompromising devotion to the truth, to the moment, to a, a non-personal, impersonal experience that's very, very energetic, 
very, very vibrant. It's not weighed down by personal motives, personal blame, personal whatever, figuring things out from a personal perspective, you know. So it's really an honor for, that she's come all the way from England uh, and flown across. And uh, in this past uh, weekend, I just, there's the four of us, uh, Lisa and Jason and, and Lisa, the two Lisas, they're both there, uh, went with, uh, with me and we went over to Colorado and just had a very fun-filled several days of lots and lots of laughter just splashing our laughter everywhere we went and really enjoying just being, just the presence. And really, isn't that what you came for? Yes. Just to, to be into an experience of presence. It's not here to learn something, really. You're not here to gain something. You're not here to achieve something. We've all tried that, right? Yeah. And we've gone to seminars, you know, well, what am I going to get out of this one? And, you know, we, we, way. but that's, that really is not the motive. That's not the purpose. It's just pure presence. It's just the simplicity of presence. And really letting yourself extend that love with everyone that you meet in presence. It's so beautiful. Or even think of. You might just be off in a meditation and you have someone come to mind and a big smile comes across your face and you think, thank you, thank you for being who you are, for, for showing up in a real way, a true way. So to me, I just feel like, wow, we have an amazing group of days here just to really to forget the days, you know, to forget everything, to, to feel safe here. To feel confident that you can relax, be playful, that everything's orchestrated, that, that things are working together for the good, always. And, and it never, it's never been any different. Nobody was ever out to get us. Nobody, it's amazing to think, to have that experience that you've never, ever, ever been mistreated. That, that you don't have to buy into that lie of, mistreatment or victimization. And when you give that up, then you don't have to buy into blame. There's no fault finding. It's like a rest. It's a contentment. Ah, everything is just right with the whole universe. Because I'm, I'm right, then everything is right. It's so precious that we can come for that. Just let the other thoughts drift away. Give me the people and free my soul and I want to get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't this great? <laughs> So is there any, anything logistical, or since this is our very first meeting, we've done different things at these very first meetings. Sometimes we just pass the microphone around and let everybody just speak from their heart. That's always fun. <laughs> and it's like, wow, hey, whoa. <laughs> we do this. We do this kind of we thing. We do do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, well. <laughs> Or a song. Or a we can song. start with a song. Oh, a song. Oh. Oh, oh Eric. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's not time for meditation, huh? No. <laughs> 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 He'll never let it end. <laughs> Anyone have a request? Particular song? That's the one I was kind of thinking of. Good rhythm of the soul. Heaven is perfect. Rhythm of the soul. Shall we do that? 
I think I'll go with Heaven is Perfect first. That feels good. <laughs>
those games I played in the past Cause now I'm living by the rhythm of the soul And it's calling me home I'm giving up believing that I really know anything at all I'm forgiving myself for being afraid And I trust I will be shown which way to go, which way to flow, which way to know who I am and who I've always been. For there's a sea. That can tell you who you are And if I forgive you Then I may know that secret too Cause now I'm living by the rhythm of the soul And it's calling me home I'm giving up believing that I really Which way to go, which way to flow, which way to know who I am and who I've always been. Well, it can be so easy when I stop making it so hard. Gently carries me along to the sound of my favorite song. So if you sometimes feel afraid of this made up world. Trust inside, and you'll know everything's okay. And now we're living by the rhythm of the soul, and it's calling us home. We're giving up believing that we've ever known anything at all. <laughs> we haven't even got to the strawberry and creams yet, but we've got, <laughs> whoa, an appetizer. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can see from Eric's face <laughs> that you are at an enlightenment retreat. <laughs> when I was over in Shanghai, China, I actually uh, spoke to a very large group over there and I had a pretty long day and everything, and I knew that um, they were tired of hearing me talk. So <laughs> I said, uh, tonight it will be a dance party. 
And oh, did they like that idea. And I said, uh, Lisa's going to be leading a dance party tonight. <laughs> and, and I looked at them all, and at the crowd, and I said, and when you come to this dance party and you look into Lisa's eyes, you will see enlightenment. And literally, when this group came, so I'm told, I wasn't there, but <laughs> she had 225 Chinese people really staring into her eyes. And she walked right around and just stared right back at him, beaming. So you see Lisa's face, you see Eric's face. You've come to an enlightenment retreat, you know? That's, enlightenment is to know thyself, you know, to, to be happy. Uh, that's all it's about. That's your function, is to be happy. It's not, you know, to memorize things or to know metaphysics or anything else except to be truly, 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 genuinely happy. It's that simple. And in order to do that, what we talk about at these retreats is really <coughs> let go of the whole world. In, in your mind, in your consciousness, don't value one scrap, you know, not one scrap, because you're it. Your mind, your consciousness, your awareness is everything. In A Course in Miracles, Jesus says, you are the goal the world is searching for. How's that? Did any of us hear that growing up? Did you ever hear that at the <laughs> breakfast table? You're having a rough day at lunchtime, your mom and dad, listen, don't forget. You are the goal that the whole world is searching for. The real you. The spirit you. And what we're discovering is that if you're not attached to anything of this world, you just are naturally happy. You don't have to like add in some ingredients or add something to yourself. It's more just take away or just examine, just see it. And I remember uh, one time I was listening to an Indian teacher, Indian Sikh Course in Miracles teacher, Tara Singh, and he just said with such grace and presence, just see the false as false. See the false as false. And that's really all that forgiveness is. It's not trying to change something, make something different, ad adjust something, adjust to something or whatever. It's just seeing the false is false in its entirety. Because then you're not attached. And isn't that what Buddha talked about? Non-attachment. Isn't that what Jesus talked about? Non-attachment, non-judgment. It's presence free from everything else because really there is nothing else. The presence, the I am presence is everything. And it's really the only thing that could be known. Whenever you try to figure something out in the world and you try to figure out a scenario or figure out a situation or whatever, you're trying to know what cannot be known. You're, you're blocking the light of yourself, of your reality, of your creator by trying to know something that can never be known. That's pretty ridiculous when you look at it. But, but that's what this journey, so-called without distance, it's just a, a discovery is really about. It just first, see the false is false. Then you can laugh. That frees you up to laugh. And then when you see the false is false, how could you participate in it? How could you invest in it? False. Why would you invest in falsity when you can experience truth. You see, that's really what this is about. And so I, I hope, I really hope and pray that this will be very, very practical for you. That if you find yourself disturbed or upset, that, that it will become apparent that there's just something that still is clinging there. There's something that's still holding. And you can just gently open and not hold anymore. Like Nikita was saying earlier, like love can seem scary and she was even saying, I need help. I need help. Lots of it too. And and to call on that, to say, I don't even know what this is. It's it, it doesn't make any sense that I would be afraid of love. I don't even know what that means, but but I want to fully experience that. I want to extend that. I want to open my heart fully to that. That's my prayer. And I don't even have to figure out the how. I know a lot of times people come to these enlightenment retreats and 
and, and it's the how question. How, 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 how. Maybe this is the one where we lay aside <laughs> the how. Because really, you know, enlightenment is present, so we don't need to look for a future goal. And if we are willing to let go of seeking for future goals, I think that the how won't be necessary then either. Because <laughs> that's usually like the number one asked question. But I think we're here not really so much to ask questions. We've been to a lot of those seminars and we've asked our questions. It was good. We got it up. We got it out. But now it's like our prayer is for an experience. And that experience of that presence is what it's all about. And that's my heart's prayer for all of you. I just want you to truly be happy. To be able to, to just bask in that happiness and, and radiate that happiness with full confidence and full trust. And if there are any parables to be shared, let them be parables of, of trust. Of, of how trust has, has shown us the, our own strength. Not our personal strength, but the strength of the light within us. Just by trusting it. That's what I want. That's what I would wish for you. That's what I would pray for you in your heart. Yeah, and if in terms of support, you know, like the, use your brothers for that to remind you. Like, rather than point out the air, it's like this is where you're doing wrong, you know, like, it's like, ask your brothers to show you the trust, like, look, you're trusting, look, look, and just extend it, like, extend it to you, ask, like, you know, use your brothers, actually, it's not, like, use your brother, like, have that goal to use your brothers as a reminder of who you are, of a reminder that, like, it's safe to love, it's safe to open up the love, to love, it's safe to ask spirit for help. It's just like use it, just open up to that kind of a curriculum. Almost like this is a new curriculum, you know, this like old way is like using your brothers to like bring up the triggers and all that. It's done. It feels like it's it's done. It has served. Now use your brothers to remind you who you are and to strengthen that trust within yourself. It's like if this is what you truly want, you're going to have the reflections. Like right away, and they're immediate. They're immediate. You don't have to wait for it. If it's just like, if this is the true prayer of the heart, it's like, boy, this is the only thing that's supported here too. There's nothing else that's supported around here. And so, what like, look what's gonna come your way. It's like <laughs> this is so powerful. This is so powerful. I can't even tell you like <laughs> things that that have been happening. But like, no, you tell me. You know. So, yeah, yeah. It's like. I, it's like I accept. <laughs> By the way, I accept, and I've been feeling. <laughs> I've been like w like uh, a few of us. We've been joining here very deeply, preparing for the festival, right? And I think it's been a month, and especially in the past a week, maybe two weeks, I keep hearing the song. It's the most wonderful time <laughs> of the year, and it feels like every day we'll get together. We're like Christmas. It's, it feels like Christmas, and then. And then the other day, and then the other day, I felt like, oh, it feels like my birthday <laughs> of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Now's the most wonderful time, time of, of the, the year. year. <laughs> and so, like, ask, ask. It was like, what do you want for your birthday or Christmas, whatever? <laughs> like, what do you want? And I was like, I just want this for you offered it's just that like to be true in full extension and love and not even knowing what uh, what that is and just to really hu like in humbleness accept the help for it really accept it and just really seeing how like how supported that prayer is really and how like like i keep saying like oh wow i don't have to fight for it you know i really don't it is actually what's given that's the only thing that's given actually that is truly s what i truly want so um yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> i think you're gonna find too there'll be actually lots of if you still have any lingering concepts in your mind that you're still playing around with you'll find it's like playing with fire uh, as you move along uh, at this festival you're gonna 
you're gonna ooh, you're gonna pull back and not want to get burned because these are concepts. I'm talking about the most mm. basic concepts. Like if you go to a, a a music festival, enlightenment retreat, and now we've got a movie fest thrown in too. Uh, some of you weren't here when Eric did his rendition. He got up on the stage at at the a music festival, and he got up there, and people were anticipating his amazing repertory of songs, <coughs> and some were just digging in, getting their drink, and s getting ready to savor this concert and everything, and he basically just meditated uh, <laughs> and popped the whole concept of performances. Um, how many times do you go to a music festival and have the whole concept of a performance popped? That's wonderful. And and I had a lot of the so-called artists coming up to me afterwards going, wow, he blew it away. He, I feel so relaxed. I was scared to death to go up there. And then Eric got up there and <laughs> now I can, oh, I feel great. Because, because it popped the performance anxiety. It popped the concept. And wow, could you see them just collaborating and joining and jam sessions, you know, the vibe of just being and letting it pour through you without any investment and any self-concept in it. Uh, another thing, if you go to uh, enlightenment festivals or retreats and everything, a lot of times people go to hear a teacher. I hope you didn't come here to hear a teacher. I really, you know, to teach is to demonstrate. The teaching is an actual living experience. It's a presence. We need to let go of this concept of te teachers and students. Um, you know, that concept is actually blocking you from the awareness of who you are. And while you might have found value of in the past, I'll assure you that once you get a taste of the presence, you're going to say, whoa, I can't believe I tied the concept of teaching down to teachers. Because you're going to get something. And as long as you're coming to something to get something, that motive is going to be a block. Because what we're learning is to give, to have is give all to all. We come to give. To teach is to demonstrate. And teaching is not done with words. We all know that. When we were children, our parents would teach us a lot of things. Don't do this. Don't smoke. Don't do this. Don't do that. And we were watching them very carefully to see if they were actually living the words. And if they were not living the words, we wouldn't pay attention to them. We would say, eh. They just say that. You know, don't do this, don't do that. You can't, you can't have hypocrisy. To teach is to demonstrate. It's an actual, actual living experience. And I would say you're teaching all the time. You're teaching all the time. Teaching is continuous. We have to lift it up higher from this idea of going to hear teachers. Because if you go to hear teachers, then you're still in persons, and there'll still be comparisons, and there's still going to be an unfulfillment in your heart, mm. if that's the purpose that you came for. It's the same with, with the, the music and the songs. Just give yourself so over to the music that you, you see that who you are is like a song, just extending. The melody goes on and on and on and on. It's endless. It's a song of gratitude. And you're singing it by your attitude. Your attitude is the song. Mm. If the words come out and, you, and they're beautiful, wonderful. If they come out and they're funny, whatever. However it looks, it doesn't really matter. That's the key. And so, and even with this idea of coming for a community experience. Well, community is a concept too, you know. It's your mind, it's your awareness, it's your consciousness that's important. That's what you're purifying, you're, or you're allowing to see that it is pure. You have a pure awareness that's there. It's always there. It's just been covered over, but you don't have to hold on to any of the covers anymore. You can pull the covers away. So I, I really encourage everyone to come and come with that openness. Come with that willingness to extend. and. If you do, you will experience that giving and receiving are the same. To the extent that you are open, you are happy, you are joyful, 
you will perceive a, an open, happy, joyful world. And all your brothers and sisters are included in that. And you, you won't be trying to get anything. I mean, I had to laugh when I went to China. We went to Beijing, and we went to uh, Shanghai, and then uh, when I got down to Hainan, I, I just greeted everybody, and a group followed us all the way down to this island. It's like the Hawaiian island of China. It's out, it's out in the sea. It's very warm. We went there, and the first question was, the guy said, Honestly, I was at your last uh, gathering in Shanghai, and I didn't get a thing out of it. <laughs> Not a thing. And now I've come all the way to Hainan, <laughs> taken a plane flight. So what are you going to give me? <laughs> you know? Because I didn't get a thing out of your last talk. And I forget the exact words that I said. We have to go back to the archives to get it. But it was, it was something to the scent of, um, uh, you'll never get anything from me. And if you follow me trying to get something, you know, you'll just be disappointed. And the whole place, you'll lose everything. There it is. You'll lose everything. If you keep coming to see me, you'll, you'll seem to lose everything. And the whole crowd erupted. And that was the first question. Yes, that was it. You'll seem to lose everything. And, and really, this is a good thing. Now some of you are probably going, oh, wow, what have I walked into here? Whoa. But, but actually, what, what I'm saying is you, you don't have to be afraid of the big bad wolf. You don't have to be afraid of what A Course in Miracles calls the ego. It's like a lot of people, the more they go on in life, they're, they're just kind of a little um, anxious around the ego. They think the ego is powerful, it, it has dominion over you, it's, it's uh, ingenious, and it's, it's clever, it's sneaky, it sabotages your whole life and everything like this. But actually, if you fear it, you give it power. You give it reality. Miracles, living in the moment, is how you see that the ego is not you and has no power. And you have dominion over it. It reminds me of a time when we were in Mexico and uh, I came out to the patio and then Nikita came walking out and she's like, oh, just waking up. And then she got this really fiery look in her eye and she said, the ego actually tried to, to tempt me last night. <laughs> uh, she just had a big smile on her face like, come on, bring it on. And she was even enjoying the fact that she was tempted. <laughs> because, why? Because you have dominion over that which has no reality. She, you develop a confidence when trials and tribulations and upsets or whatever, these things may come into your awareness, you need to have that smile on your face. You need to have the smile on your face, because if you're not smiling and you're afraid, you've already given away your power. You've already disempowered yourself. And that's what the journey is about. You've got to have a confidence. When arrogance arises, when control arises, when jealousies arise, when anger arises, sadness, depression, you know, if you have the thought, oh no, here it comes again. That's just taking a past experience and, and saying, oh no, you know, I'm, it's giving power to something that doesn't have empowerment. So, so that's really another reason to come here in confidence and grow in strength and confidence of the power of your mind. That's what empowerment is about. Your mind is very, very strong. It was created that way. And weakness is an unnatural condition. So that's a really good thing to, to keep in mind as you come to extend. You're here for empowerment. You're not here to learn a few more techniques and tools. You're not here to become a teacher of something so you can try to go teach other people. You're here for an actual experience that you are, naturally.
I see bobbing heads. <laughs> David, I think a few logistics has to be talked about. For example, who's leading all the sessions and where, and who is in the group. Yes. Do you know this? Tammy. Okay, Val. Do you need, is everybody here Val, or should Val come up and take a microphone? Val, Val. And being on time. Yeah, I know that one. Time for they have another time. Yeah, they have another time. So, um, everybody who's not at Masterpiece, well, that means everybody who's here at Angel Standing or down in the campground, campers. Um, the altar session will start at 9 a.m. And the groups are um, Joe, Pete, Eric, Kevin, Ludwig, and Al. You'll be with Ricky in the Mystic One. That's the bus. <coughs> and then Ulla, Nicholas, Chris, Laurie, and Patrice will be with me in the retreat trailer. And if you don't know where that is, here's uh, your hand. It's the end, right? Yeah. It's the end of the loop. Yeah, exactly. And it says retreat on the front, and it's the largest trailer down there. Right by the wooden cabin. Okay, then Karen, Suzanne, not you, Suzanne. Suzanne yeah. Jessica, Stephen, Rebecca, you will all be with Yuta in the Rainbow Dome. So that's the very colorful dome-like structure in the campground. Then Sundari, Lawrence, Rick, Desi, and KC will be with Selita in the gazebo. There are two gazebos in the campground, so I'm not sure which one. Um, so I think that will be obvious in the morning at 9. The most central one. Okay. Okay. Then Craig, Christian, Chrissy, AC, Danny, Sylvia, Kate, Jonathan, and Francis Allen will be with Greg at Angel's Landing. And then everyone who's staying at Masterpiece, um, I don't have this list on me, but Cody has the list. So there'll be two groups at Masterpiece. Um, Cody will have one, and Doug will have the other. And he'll all be going home together tonight, so Cody can share that information with you. And Masterpiece will start the altar session 20 minutes before us. So we're starting at 9. That makes it 8.40. You'll have your session. And you'll be ready to leave, like getting in your vehicles, at 9.40 to be here for a session at 10.15. And that's right here, right up here. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. yeah. So, is there anybody whose name I didn't mention who is not staying at Masterpiece? Just want to make sure we've got everybody. Okay. Um, these, this list will be posted in the bathhouse in the campground and. We'll put a few around up here as well, if 
in case you need memory assistance. Okay, that's it. Thank you. It's in the gazebo. Um, yeah, the central, the central gazebo down there in the campground. Yeah. 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 And another thing, be on time. Yes. I know it has nothing to do with time, and we're going beyond time, but <laughs> be on time. <laughs> <laughs> Being on time somehow goes hand in hand with it. So, yeah. <laughs> it's not logical. So. Yeah. It's gonna, uh, whoever is staying <laughs> wherever, there's gonna be breakfast available there. Wherever you're staying, there will be food. Simple breakfast like cereal. Just stick your nose up in the morning and yeah. just, there will be food. But we're gonna have two meals, one at 12.30 and another one is at 5.30 and breakfast is just gonna be wherever you are. <laughs> Breakfast is wherever you are. This year we're going to do the food thing. Next year it's breatharian. Uh, and, but this year. Strawberrian this year. This year strawberrian, next year breatharian. So enjoy your food this time. You should know this is the way it's going for me and you're all a reflection of my mind. Yeah, so and me. I don't feel hungry. Me neither. I'm not hungry at all. But if you still feel hungry, this is the last year for that. There's still some room for it. Yeah. And next year it's breatharian, so you know you got to I'm serious. I'm sincere. We believe you. I got. I started getting mail last time. I haven't been here for a while, but I was here. I started getting all this mail in the postal mail, just saying, "David, are you still eating?" <laughs> and saying, "Do." Are you still going to the refrigerator? This was like, I was reading it to the whole group. Yeah. Like, this was months ago when I was here. I thought, okay, well, this must be the last year for that. <laughs> so any questions about food, body image, sleeping, dieting, body sleeping. Body yeah, we'll, we'll address those one more year and then that's it. <laughs> yeah. year, year after that, there's no breathing either, right? Yeah, no breathing. That's two years, but you're jumping a gun here. <laughs> The first we go next year, breath in, and then we, yeah. But we go to the Morpheus. You really believe that's air that you're breathing? And we take it, that's what we, but we're trying not to get, we're in the moment. We're, we're not getting too far ahead of ourselves. Let's not skip steps. We're not skipping any yeah. steps. We're practical. Baby steps. Yeah. And anyway, we are. <laughs> the time. Oh, the time. The I don't time. do breakfast. I hardly See, do any just, food at all. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I can't. <laughs> but it's 7.30. Accepted masterpiece. Yeah. Accepted masterpiece. Okay. Very good. And, well, we had all kinds of fun ideas about all of you sharing, but then the little birdie whispered in my ear, not tonight because this is the first night. People have come distances and you don't want them to get to bed too late because they, they won't get up. <laughs> they'll just be sleeping. They'll they'll miss the altar, the altar sessions. The altar sessions. But we, I still would like to hear from you. Uh, now I've told you some of the topics we're not going to cover and what we are covering. But I want to hear uh, whatever you would like to hear or what you're interested in. Yeah, me too. Sundari. It's like offering it up to the light, you know, yes. just the altar. giving it. This is not the William Hurt movie, Altered States. This is yeah. actually <laughs> handing it, handing it over, giving it up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah being altered. In the altar. All right. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> Any other topics, themes, anything that's 
the requests of the heart. Maybe I'd like to hear. Yes. Yeah. Like Francis. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk. I'll talk a bit about space because you're right. It's sometimes we have been I, emphasizing time. Let's let's uh, really go into space because uh, t Jesus tells us in the course that time and space are the same illusion. And I think I might have to go into quantum. I have to go into quantum gear for that to uh, superposition and the whole idea of the quantum field because the quantum field, yeah, doesn't have any spatial component to it or any time component to it. And there's no, you know, gravity, no gravitational fields, and so, yeah, we'll talk about that. It very much sounds like Buddha's empty, emptiness. But we'll, I'll talk about that then. Remind me. Space. <laughs> David, space. Don't get spaced out on time. Talk a little bit on space. Yeah, and throw some relativity, no relativity in there. Okay, no relativity. Subjectivity. We talked a little bit tonight about love has no object. So this, all this subjective perception stuff, seven different subjective perceptions. No wonder there's, there's a conflict if you've got subjective perceptions clashing always. It's good to know that they aren't real and they really don't have any validity or reality. That's what we'll explore. It. Mm -hmm. That's good. I want to hear requests of the heart. I want to fall in love and never fall out. Yay! <laughs> granted! Granted! Yeah, I don't know how. Okay, you'll be shown. Thank you. This is the nature of this place. <laughs> That's granted. Yes. That's good. Any other requests of the heart? That's good. That's good too. That's, That's a great. good start. That's a great place to be. Consistently choosing the miracle. Yay! Consistently <laughs> choosing the miracle granted. Yeah. <laughs> How about forgiveness? Uh -huh. forgiveness. Yeah. Forgiveness. Real forgiveness. Real yeah, forgiveness. Real forgiveness. Real. Okay. Nicholas. Uh, here, here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this one is worth. Uh, I'm gonna hear the heart request uh, magnified. <laughs> yeah, I'm just. Um, the question that comes to mind is like, does it have to be like a roller coaster ride? Like, I mean, I've been here three weeks and it's been amazing, but it's just like uh, anger, sadness, anger, sadness. It's just like, is there? I guess, is it just okay for it to be a roller coaster ride, or does it, or is there a way to get it, kind of like what she was saying, uh, consistent love, like stay in the love, and just never leave, <laughs> just, you know, it's on my heart, it's the roller coaster part. <laughs> I hear that. Where is the love? You said was mine, all mine, till the end of time. Was it just a lie? Where is the love? If you had had some chance. <laughs> so, well, that's that's what you're calling for. You, it's like beyond the roller coaster, the, the, roller coaster. the ups and downs. Yeah. 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 I had like yeah. There's I I, I know that there's a prayer in the heart that to really go with the consistency of the love with the consistency of the experience and not have it like oh i'm in this deep experience and then all of a sudden i have to seemingly go through something or i have to go through some weird tunnel and then to to go back to that heart opening experience and I was saying in the past few days, I think the mind is very ready to just really go with the consistency of it. Because, you know, we've looked at a lot of fear, right? And a lot of fear has been undone. And now it's just the mind is ready for that consistency. And uh, 
and I th and that's granted, yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> like I just I just really feel it in my heart. Like that is that is my wish. Like that like that is what I want. It's like what would you want for your birthday? This is what I would want. And I I, I heard David say said, this is what's given. Like this is this is actually what spirit wants for us and like that's what I'm saying, I accept. And so yeah, that is very much heard that prayer for the consistency of the experience. And that's why we, we did so much mind clearing here in preparation for it, which is like we it was all to prepare the mind to really to allow spirit come in and just really take us into it gently and trust is the key. Trust, allowance and cluelessness and making no assumptions and conclusions and staying open. <laughs> that's it. That's the recipe, by the way. There you go. <laughs> if that's what you want, this Wait, is it. I, I need to <laughs> I'll repeat. <laughs> I'll remind you. <laughs> and we want also simplicity, like what seems to be the roller coaster. You can't really ever figure it out and you can't really dissect it or whatever. But I will say the clue is that that but everything is about identity. So we're really joining in coming to a real clear, clear, clear experience of identity. And that seems to involve, not in reality, but it seems to involve a, a surrender or a letting go of, of self-concepts. You know, if you're identified with the man, the woman, the mother, the father, sister, brother, you're identified with the roles and so forth, you know, this is really getting into the latter chapters of A Course in Miracles. Self versus self-concept. Capital self. Your real self. Your real spiritual self versus egoic self-concepts that were made to, to shroud your mind, to keep your mind caught up in shadows. And you know how I said it's about seeing the false as false. Well, when you see the false as false, the false drops. It's, it's not about intellectually pointing a finger at something, saying this is false, that is false. It, the next step is obviously releasing or letting go whatever you had identified with. So this is not a, a play of ideas. This is not an intellectual experience. This is actually having the trust in your heart, you know, to shed whatever attachments, whatever you had been clinging to. And I know that that's a lot of you ha are going through that. You're you're in the middle of a dismantling, like in I Heart Huckabees. <laughs> and we're the existential therapist, psychotherapist here for you. And there'll be others. <laughs> You'll meet your brothers and sisters. They'll be they'll be part of that dismantling. Things will come out of their mouths that will you'll be like, whoa, that's it. So that's really. I mean, we're really with you in that because it's yeah. it just seems to be a dismantling, but then. You, you emerge in your own fullness, in your own glory, unscathed by <laughs> whatever seemed to pass. You know, you won't, you won't stay there. Just like the caterpillar doesn't stay in the cocoon. The cat caterpillar emerges with strength and the wings come out and then and flies, literally takes off. And spiritually that's exactly what happens and I think you know, it will be it will be uncompromising, but but if you w really want that, that's why you're here. You don't want it watered down. You don't want it kind of diluted. It's like that's what that was always my prayer with spirit. Give it to me straight. Mm -hmm. Give it to me straight. And there can be a a bit of a rattle with that when you, you say, "Whoa, that's really strong." And, but you know, but then you're grateful. You feel the gratitude coming out, like thank you. So I think. That's that's coming, you know. That's, that's, where, coming, that's where the yeah. focus is. <coughs> the line that's coming up for me is the change from attraction to guilt to attraction to innocence. I mean, that's what you've been speaking all about. But I just noticed how, you know, what you're saying earlier—the temptation—and then to see the false as false, and then it's just like the innocence, and really love and revel in that innocence. That's the call of my heart. That I can be in my joy and my love and and forget about fear. What's that? I don't know that. That's not in my vocabulary. It's beautiful. 
Yeah, a lot of you have read Byron Katie about the turn it around. We really are going for a deep turn it around, you know, from the attraction to guilt to the attraction to innocence. Because then you gain the momentum of really starting to see the, the great value of escape that's, that's involved here. And it's just beyond anything you could imagine. But, but that being drawn to innocence, I think that's why you're here. You, you're being drawn to that. You wouldn't come here if, if there was a sense of, of guilt or of wrongdoing or whatever. It's really coming because you feel, ah, oh, yes, I'm calling forth the witnesses now to my innocence. Not to pointing out errors, not to pointing out mistakes. You know, coming into a state of mind where you can see that, that everything is perfect and that you never really could make a mistake. You know, that's, that's where the innocence is. In seeing that you are beyond the possibility of mistakes. And clearly, you know, even a lot of you have come through the Course, and the Course is very much about choose again, and, you know, Holy Spirit decide for God, for me. I could choose to see this differently. It'll be fun with some of Lisa Cairn's uh, talks too, because there'll be the presence too coming through, kind of calling beyond the idea of choice. Really, I would call it acceptance. Because this experience of the moment is really not like a choice, like choices of the world. It's just an absolute acceptance. Where you don't make any exceptions to that acceptance. If you want to come at it from that angle, you can even do it without talking about choice. You know, there's ways, there's words, just coming into that acceptance. And that's what uh, the Course calls, accept the atonement for yourself. That's the sole responsibility, that's the only responsibility you have, is to have that acceptance. So we're going to zoom into that. That's really what everything we talk about, no matter what words we use, what vocabulary, it doesn't really matter. We're really going to zoom into that atonement. Accepting that presence as your reality. Yeah, and I really am uh, feeling like a great delight around our, our first movie uh, retreat that we're having too, because there's been such a string of amazing movies. It seems like we used to wait like five or six months for one of these amazing movies to come out, and now boom, we'll start. We'll go all the way back to last year, like around December. Yeah. Um, what was the one we had there about um, about time? About time. Yeah, and then this year it's just been one after the another. It's like heralding eternity. Um, and like Lucy, ah, amazing, amazing, amazing movie. I saw it, that again, I think for the third time, still was seeing, Spirit was like doing more instructions on that movie. Mm. Seeing the third time through, like, see, 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 Kevin's here. Kevin's our movie, we have a sh a, an amazing chef who's a world famous chef, and, and Kevin is like with movies and finding metaphors, uh, Kirsten writes a review, and, or I write a review, and then we read Kevin's email, and we go, oh my god, did you see? He's got like a wide vision, He's, and notice this, and notice that, did you see that symbol there? It's, a, it's, a, it's like, the whole thing, it's just, an, it's like, oh my god. We get, the, we get a glimpse of it, and then Kevin gives us the essence of the, the nuances of everything that was there. But that's going to be fun, because these movies are absolutely amazing. Lucy was a mind-blowing movie, and then I did yesterday, I think it was yesterday, I, I lose track of the days, but I saw um, The Giver for the second time. And I was just sitting there going, whoa, 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 again, again, again. You know, about, about uh, 1993 I was in a community in, uh, in Denver, and we all kind of went off our ways in all kinds of different directions. And one night I was sitting before I left that community, and everybody was trying to prophesy what I would be doing in 10 or 20 years. And one of the people there, Luke, said, you will have a, like a little mini movie theater, and you will watch movies with people, and then instead of going to a confessional, you'll go into a little processing booth, 
and go into these deep mystical experiences with people. Kind of, that was a pretty good prophecy. That actually, it was like, 93, that's, what is that, 21 years ago, this was a prophecy that was given, and I'm like, hmm, it's working out. So, we should have a lot of fun with that. That's kind of, that's like, talk about the cherry on the cake and the whipped cream. We go through our music and enlightenment retreat, and then we, ooh, we go into these yes. movies. Ah. Yum. <laughs> I may be going to be a breath area, but I'm still going to be yum with these movies. <laughs> I'm eating the movie there. Mmm. -hmm. <laughs> Okay, well we don't want to keep you too long tonight because actually we have a, a full, full day tomorrow. I think after your sessions and everything, we'll come right back here for a 10-15 session, which I'll be sharing, and then at 3 o'clock... Yeah, at 3 o'clock there's going to be another session with at, at, at the stage, down at the stage with Lisa Cairns. <laughs> and <laughs> and, uh, and then at 7, there's going to be another session, most likely a music set, mu something musical. So, That's good. Yeah. So even though, and at after that, stage. we're going to be, we, we'll be spontaneous, we don't really have a schedule for the whole thing, but that, at least you can think of that, 10.15, 3 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Do we have three minutes for one closing song from Eric? <laughs> <laughs> to send everyone Strawberry off. Strawberry Fields Forever, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> no? <laughs> That's the Beatles. <laughs> We've got to get an Eric. We could do the, uh, the Laura's version. That she oh, oh yeah, yeah, that one. Our, our, oh. our Strawberry Fields yeah, Forever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Laura will be here at when on Wednesday or soon. Eh? She's not here Friday yet. But Monday. Friday to Monday. Maybe her and Donna. Yeah, she wrote the song last year, um, and uh, yeah, it was like a kind of a take on the original Beatles song, and then. Just threw in a lot of lyrics about the festival and the canyon walls and yeah. So strawberry I think she called it Strawberry Fields Redux. <laughs> Fly away. 
sleep after that. Now <laughs> <laughs> go settle in now. <laughs> settle in and wake up. Oh, Thank you. Good afternoon, Thank good evening, you. and, and good night. night. <laughs>